everyone. Welcome to tonight's Common Council meeting. As always, we start the meeting uh, with the quote for the week by our city clerk, Sue Richards. Thank you. The game of life is the game of boomerangs. Our thoughts, deeds, and words return, return to us sooner or later with astounding accuracy. Call the seventh regular meeting of the Common Council to order. Please call the roll. Boren? Here. Balk? Here. Decker? Here. Gisha? Here. Hannah? Here. Heidemann? Here. Kittleson? Here. Kleunis? Here. Meyer? Here. Montemayor? Here. Rinfleisch? Here. Ryan? Excuse. Surik? Here. Vanderweel? Here. Verhasselt? Here. And Wangaman? Here. Fifteen present. Quorum is present. At this time, we'd uh, ask Alderman Hannah to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, President Hanna. Next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Bear. I would make uh, a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Motion and second to approve minutes under discussion. There being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Minutes are approved. Confirmation of mayor's appointments. Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. Submitted by the mayor. Hereby submit the following appointment for your consideration. John Kittleson to be considered for appointment to the Sheboygan Commission on Fair Housing Practices to fill the unexpired term of Mary Keitel, whose term expires on 4 13 And I need a motion to confirm. Oh, President Hanna. I would make a motion to confirm Mr. Kittles. Second. Motion and second to confirm appointment under discussion. There is none. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Appointments confirmed. Continue. We should have a roll call on that for a we'll, uh, do a roll call on that. Let's take them back on the confirmation of Kittleson. Please call the roll. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Here. Aye. <laughs> yes? Here and I. Okay. <laughs> Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Zurich, aye. Vanderweel, aye. for Hassel, aye. and Wangaman. Aye. Fifteen ayes. Motion carries. Appointments confirmed. Please continue. And Mark Zafus to be considered for appointment to the Wellness Committee as the representative from the Mead Public Library with a term expiring 4-30-09. Signed by the mayor. Any motion to confirm? I would make a motion to confirm that appointment. Second. Motion and second to confirm under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Bauk? Aye. Decker? Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Kleinus? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. And Boren? Aye. Fifteen ayes. Motion carries. Next item on the agenda, public forum. Madam Sue? Uh, yes, first on the list will be Jeff Schuko. <clears throat> Mr. Schuko? And Mr. Shuko, can I have your home address, please? 2411 D Camelot Boulevard. And you will have five minutes, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, Your Honor, uh, older people, citizens, I just wanted to state first to the mayor that in regard to the independent investigation by the Oshkosh Police Department concerning a racist photo being distributed over the Internet of our mayor during a recall election attempt, uh, the conclusion of this investigation was it was politically motivated. Uh, and I agree that, yes, it was politically motivated. It was during a recall election. The photo, however, was racially motivated. Uh, for example, an upside-down American flag would have made it political. This quote-unquote independent investigation, Your Honor, I just wanted to say I felt was a whitewash. Uh, now, in regard to... Uh, flooding problem that problems that we've had in town and 
I see they're still fairly widespread, partly because some of the climate change we're experiencing. I an article in the press, a uh, letter to the editor, that I just, for those of you that didn't have a chance to read it, I'll just briefly touch on the stormwater problems mentioned. On 17th Street and Ashland Avenue, uh, since 1998 actually, it's flooded almost every year since then. Even after the holding tanks under the streets were put in. This is because the holding tanks do nothing more actually than delay the inevitable in the event that we have sustained rains. Uh, after the big flood, well, let me see. Yeah, after the big flood in 1998, the city engineer told me and neighbors the proper solution would be to run another large stormwater line to the lake from there, uh, from that location. Uh, what we did instead was, it was a cost-saving measure, and I wanted to mention to uh, everyone in the city that this council wasn't in office at that time, and neither were you, Your Honor, but there was a cost-saving uh, measure that was implemented which was to put in the holding tanks instead of running another main to the lake, because it, it is very expensive. Now, what we ended up with is kind of what I suspected with the city engineer, uh, that we would still have flooding if we had, had sustained rains. One of them that I have on film, and we have photographs, too, of Lynn's car, which is, which is halfway underwater. And anybody that wants to see some film footage, we have it on film, too, flooding three times in one week for a block and a half long all the way across the street, up to 21 inches deep. Now, we've got a great start, actually. Uh, the decisions made aren't really bad ones. It might look that way now because the problem hasn't been solved, but what we actually have now is the infrastructure that is all in place, the additional drains, the holding tanks. It's because of all the development to the west and all the pavement that's added, more rooftops, that sort of thing, adds tax revenue, but it also, unfortunately, adds stormwater runoff to the system. But now, with the system we have in place, by running one main down, possibly, Ashland Avenue, which needs to be repaved anyway, it's really bad, that whole system will handle almost any rain conditions. I would estimate it's at least a four-foot diameter main, preferably the inside diameter, 48 inches. This, the past city engineer and I had discussed that, and he felt that that'd be the best route to go. Now, unfortunately, people's homes and basements still are flooding, and, well, it's up to you folks, you know, what we end up doing. I know money's tight, but I just wanted to help provide you with some additional information to make those decisions. And like I said, anybody that'd like to view the film footage, uh, feel free to ask or give me a call. I'd be happy to, to show it to anyone. Thank you, Your Honor, citizens, uh, all the people. Thank you. And then we have Lee Montemayor. Mr. Montemayor, can you give me your home address, please? Yes, 1015 Logan. And you will have five minutes, sir. Thank you, Madam City Clerk Richards. Uh, before I get into my uh, speech, I'd like to uh, make a couple of comments about Mayor Perez because it's been a kind of a running joke between us for some time. When uh, Mayor Perez was first elected, I informed him to get ready to be blamed for everything that goes wrong in Sheboygan, even the things that he has no control over. Sure enough, this guy gets blamed for laws enacted in Washington and Madison although he doesn't have control or influence in these matters. The governor signs the bills and the into law and the mayor gets blamed for it. Well, that's one powerful mayor we elected. I joked with him that his first order of business was to fix the clock atop a U.S. bank, even though it's not the city's responsibility. Whenever I saw the mayor, I would ask the same question. Why isn't the clock fixed? What's the holdup? Well, now he can finally answer, it's fixed. <laughs> Seriously, folks, I would like to thank Mr. Mike Nichols of U.S. Bank for the repair of the clock. Once again, the citizens of Sheboygan can see and read the time and temperature and enjoy the clock in full operation. It's better than ever. Now, 
for the committee of the whole meeting until last week and for some uh, misinformation and flawed procedure during regarding the second agenda uh, item on the agenda the communication was filed by public works committee the board of parks and forestry commission and both the ROs were accepted and filed by the common council before coming to the committee of the whole this should have been nothing more than house clean of the docket and should have been filed without discussion but because you did go into discussion of this communication, I have some comments as chairman of the Board of Parks and Forestry Commission and the creation of the Dog Study Committee. A communication by a citizen cannot be amended. It can be filed, preferred, accepted, but the one thing that cannot be done is to amend any of the wording or its contents. It must stand as written. Alderman Montemayor's statement that Chairman Harold Beevil of the dog study is a dog owner is incorrect. However, three of the five members of that committee are dog owners. The members of the study committee were confirmed by the council and the time to question them about being dog haters was before their appointments, not after their assigned duties mandated by the common council was completed. Just because the final report didn't agree with the findings one would have preferred. The comment to call the study committee and council members dog haters is somewhat insulting to our fellow citizens who elected the members to represent them. An apology should be made to our citizens, council members, and especially to the highly qualified dog study committee members who, for such an unfound statement. The letter's comment the letter writer's comments should have been studied, have been studied for years, and the results are basically the same after each communication is investigated. The safety and the health of our children and citizens comes first and has the utmost priority before any recommendations are passed on to the council for action. For some of you that weren't here at the time, here's a kind of a short history of the study. A resolution mandating pets study friendly areas and park study was authored by a council member who also didn't agree with the prior recommendations and studies. The dog study committee was created to fully study the, res the resolution's request. After the initial report was submitted, the report was sent back to the dog study committee for further recommendations due to citizens' concerns about dog affecting their particular area and neighborhood park. The study continued for the North for another 30 days and once again was submitted to the council with new recommendations which were accepted and the recommendations were implemented. The dog study committee can help understand the facts and figures about dog parks and related matters. I recommend reading this document to educate oneself on this issue. Thank you. Thank you. That's it. Thank you. Thank you to the citizens that addressed the council tonight. Next uh, item on the agenda is a notice of a hearing. Public notice that the Board of Water Commissioners filed a report of special assessments for water laterals replacements in the following streets. Illinois Avenue from South 14th Street to South 15th Street. South 7th Street from Broadway to High Avenue. Is there anyone here that would like to address the council? Is there anyone that would like to address the council? Is there anyone that would like to address the council? There being none, President Hannum. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd make a motion to close the hearing. Second. Motion and second to close the hearing. Under discussion. There is none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Next, another hearing to amend the zoning map for property located at 1003 South 14th Street from Class Urban Industrial to Class Urban commercial classification. Is there anyone here that would like to address the council? Is there anyone here that would like to address the council? Is there anyone here that would like to address the council? Now, I just need to explain that I'm not crazy. I asked three times as protocol, so just so <laughs> Okay, there's no one. There being no one. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I make a motion to close the hearing. Second. Motion is second to close hearing. Under discussion. 
There is none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion hearing is closed. Thank you very much. Next item is a consent agenda, 7-1 through 7-24. President Hanna. Thank you again, Mr. Mayor. I'd make a motion that all resolutions be put upon their passage and all RCs be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second under discussion on the consent agenda. There being none, please call the roll. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Kittleson? Clayunas, Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Rinfleisch, Zurich, Vanderweel, Aye. Verhasselt, Aye. Wangeman, Aye. Boren, Aye. and Bauk. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Communications and petitions 725 and 726 to be referred. Report of Officers 2, 727 lies over. To be referred. 728 through 731, uh, 741, I should mm -hmm. say, to be referred with the exception of change being made in, on uh, 731, and that is that that communication will also be referred to Committee of the Whole. Please make that notation. Okay. Vice President Boren. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, regarding document number 728, uh, I want to just make sure that the, and I talked with the Chairman of the Finance Committee earlier today, uh, Chairman Gisha, regarding 728, that the Finance Committee be kept in the pipeline. I'm not necessarily going to make a referral to finance, but I think with this document uh, talking about renewing the lease for the Blue Line Ice Skating Association, besides planning, I think uh, finance should also be kept in the loop as we proceed on this. There is, a, when we do have multiple referrals and create some, some issues and some concerns. What I'm hoping here is that the City Plan Commission has an opportunity to discuss the, uh, the, the proposition uh, and, and then uh, perhaps make a, probably make a referral to Public Works and Public Works make a referral back to Finance to, to have that logical sequence uh, of discussions. Otherwise, when we have multiple re uh, referrals, we have multiple discussions, and one comes in before the next, and we have issues like we've had before. So I think that would be a good approach to take. But I agree with you, Vice President Boren. It, uh, at some point, it should end up in the uh, Finance Committee's lap. Okay? Thank you. President Hanna? Thank you. Uh, I just wanted to, to amplify all the person born's concerns also and i plan on attending the city planning commission i think any time a property comes up from a lease situation we owe it to the taxpayers to look at whether selling it to them is the appropriate action so i'm i'm real glad that it's it's on the docket it's going to city plan i would encourage people to to be there good point Alvin. okay moving on then resolutions introduced Three, 742 by Alderman Ryan, authorizing entering into a grant agreement with the Wisconsin Department of Commerce Brownfield Grant Program in the amount of 250000 for the purpose of assisting the demolition and environmental costs related to the redevelopment of the former Kingsbury Brewery site. Alderman Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I believe this is the document that I would like to also take 744 with this, unless there's an objection. Please do. As they relate and ask for uh, suspension of the rules on 744. I don't believe 742 does need a suspension. It does. It does. It does? It does. Okay. It's, suspension it does. on both 742 and 744. The purpose being that uh, by entering into this agreement with the Wisconsin Department of Commerce for the Brownfields grant of $250,000, we have a the clock starts ticking. We're already two months into a 26-month process. Uh, so at the end of 26 months, it's kind of a use it or lose it. So um, it's somewhat imperative now after talking to staff and Alderperson Ryan, who called me from Florida, uh, that we move this right along. So I ask for uh, 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 suspension and passage. Hold on. Is there any objection to suspension? There is no objection. I just need a resolution to put it upon its passage. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. There's a motion and second to put 742 upon its passage. We'll take 744 separately, Elder On 742, under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. 
Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clionis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rindfleisch? Aye. Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Longeman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. And Decker? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 744, Alderman Gisha, would you like to make a motion on that? Yes, thank you. I move that uh, item 744 be put upon its passage. Okay. Is there okay. a motion and second under discussion on 744? Alderman Clayunas. Thank you, Your Honor. I was looking at the uh, agreement, and um, it says, you know, the work authorization, and I turned to the last page. I have some questions about it. It says those services contained in Sigma's proposal dated April 25, 2008, which are attached hereto and incorporated herein by reference to number 10972. Is there something that we don't have? It says attached to. I, I don't have any. It, what are they going to do for us? I kept reading through this thing, trying to figure out what are they going to do, specifics. Um, and it, there's nothing. There'd be a, would you like for attorney yeah. to? Yeah, I, yeah, I, I don't know who we asked the question. I, 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 thank you, uh, Your Honor. Alderman Clionis, yes, there is an attachment, and perhaps Paulette can best address it. I know. Uh, planning department interviewed a number of consulting firms that submitted requests for proposal and believe they're recommending accepting this one, but perhaps she can explain what they're going to do. Ms. Andrews, please come up. <clears throat> Mic's on. Thank you, Mayor and Common Council. We did interview, it was eight or nine different um, environmental consulting firms, and we do have those proposals, and Sigma's proposal would become a part of that contract, and we do have that in the office. And if that's something that you feel that you need before you can vote on that, we can do that for the council. What it does is it outlines exactly what's in the uh, first grant that we received for the site from the Department of Natural Resources for the Ready for Reuse grant. And it's basically, it's site investigation. Um, it would be on-site uh, monitoring while a contractor comes in and while we're working with a developer to redevelop and clean up the site. And there's, and there's also that, I think it's roughly $47,000 that's up, um, an expense through the grants that we've received, and it's a not to exceed. And if they would have to go above that, they would have to contact us. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Then a follow-up question. Is it typical that it's time and materials, the way that this is bid on is time and materials, because this, they don't know how much work it's going to involve? Yes. Okay. This, this one was a difficult one, I know, for a lot of the consultants to bid on. We did receive some questions on it, and uh, that's why we have a not to exceed, because we felt like we yeah. had to have some type of a ceiling. Right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So we have 744, motion and second to put it a, put a resolution upon its passage. Any further discussion? There is none. Please call the roll. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clionis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rindfleisch? Aye. Zurich? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangeman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Decker? Aye. And Gisha? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Going back one. 743 by Alderman Gisha and Hannah supporting the reestablishment of the Joint Dispatch Study Committee, a subcommittee of the Shared Services Committee. President Hannah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second to put 743 upon its passage. Under discussion. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. As being a member of the, the City County's Shared Service Committee, uh, this information was presented to us at the last meeting, and I don't know yay or nay if, if this is a good idea, but it was presented to the county. The county is looking at this information, and I think it's a good step to go ahead and discuss. This, I don't know that this means that all of the council is fully endorsing this particular idea, but I think we're fully endorsing talking about it. Thank you. Any more discussion? Alderman Verhassel. Thank you, Anna. Can I ask if uh, there's an intended time frame attached with this committee? As a, if there's a lifetime to this committee, 
Let's start ahead. The, uh, the resolution is simply in support of. There's no creation or anything like that, correct, President Hanna? That, that uh, I would believe that, that if there's a life to be given to it, a sunset clause of some, some, some sort that would be done by the City County Shared Services Committee as a subcommittee. All right. Okay. Thanks. Any further questions? <clears throat> there being none, please call the roll. Heideman? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Cleonis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Falk? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. And Hannah? Aye. Fifteen ayes. Motion carries. Uh, 745 and 46 lies over. 747 and 48 to be referred. Report of committee 7, 749 by law and licensing recommending that beverage operators license number 7362 be granted and to request a 28 calendar day voluntary surrender of the license. Vice President Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor, uh, this uh, lic licensee is uh, Jason Jacobs, and he and his brother run Shenanigans Bar on South A Street. This has been an establishment that we've been having some difficulty with the last few months. And Mr. Jacobs uh, appeared before our committee and uh, we did decide to grant the license, but uh, we requested the 28-day voluntary surrender of his license. And if he chooses not to voluntarily surrender after, uh, within 30 days, he has the option of going to a quasi-judicial hearing. And I believe this coming Tuesday night, Shenanigans Bar uh, is going to be before the Law and Licensing, Link, Law and Licensing Committee for a quasi-judicial hearing. So this, this establishment is uh, uh, establishing kind of a negative track record before our committee, but uh, Jason, we decided to grant the license. Okay, thank you, Vice President Bourne. Any further discussion on 749? There is none, please call the roll. Kittleson? Aye. Clionis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Zurich? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhassel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren, Falk, Gisha, Aye. Hannah, Aye. and Heideman. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 750 by law and licensing, recommending that beverage operators license number 7183 be denied based on the applicant's failure to reveal all convictions, status of a repeat law violator, and record of violations related to the licensed activity. Vice President Boren. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the report of the committee be accepted and adopted. Motion and second, under discussion. Under discussion, is Ashley Bauer here tonight? Yeah. Would you like to address the council under discussion? Please come up. Uh, I'll proceed first, Your okay. Honor, okay. and then I'll open the floor to Ms. Bauer. Uh, Ms. Bauer appeared before our committee, uh, our last committee meeting, and uh, this is the record that the assistant the city attorney presented to the committee. Uh, Ms. Bauer revealed a 2003 misdemeanor conviction for OAS and a 2007 misdemeanor con conviction for possession, which is actually three separate convictions, one for possession of THC, one for possession of cocaine, and one, per, uh, p one for possession of drug paraphernalia. The record of convictions uh, sh uh, she should have revealed is as follows. Uh, Repeat OWL 2002 misdemeanor, OAS 2003 misdemeanor, possession of THC 2007 misdemeanor, uh, possession cocaine 2007 misdemeanor, possession drug paraphernalia 2007 misdemeanor, uh, bail jumping, which is pending, and I am checking with the assistant city attorney today, those are related to some of the drug charges. Uh, that's all I'll say for now, but I reserve the right to uh, call Lieutenant David Sheffhauser from the Police Department. Very well. Ma'am, you have the floor. Um, Ashley, excuse me, how do you spell your last name? B-O-W. B-O-W-E-R? Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead. Um, at the time, I was having a really hard time in my life. Um, 
I had had a drug overdose. I almost died. Since then, I've been... Can you um, speak a little louder, please? You may want to yeah. pull the mic just to you just a little bit. Since then, I've tried to turn my... I'm turning my life around. I went through treatment. I was put on... And I'm actually up for early to get off here in about a month. It's okay where I'm working with my PO. She had said that was all right. I have never had a problem working as a bartender. Um, I believe I have a letter that um, that was sent to you guys from my boss, actually. And I'm just, I'm working on getting my life together and going back to school, and I've been clean since. And, I mean, taking my liquor license would be my job, so I'm doing as much as I can possibly to keep it, I guess. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank Is you. that all you have to say? Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Vice President Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to open the floor to uh, Lieutenant David Sheffhauser, who's the Police Department's liaison with the Law and Licensing Committee. Is that a motion? That's a motion to open a up second? the floor. Motion and second to open the floor. Under discussion. There being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Mike's on. Um, Alderman Bourne spoke uh, a short time ago about some of Ashley Bower's convictions. Uh, the first one I'll talk about was um, uh, her first uh, series of convictions in um, February 22nd of uh, 2007. That's where she has these uh, three possessions of uh, THC, cocaine, and drug paraphernalia. These were initially felony charges, but they were, they're all reduced to misdemeanors. The way that incident started was uh, our officers were um, uh, dispatched to assist the ambulance. This was at an apartment uh, that Ashley Bauer lived at with her uh, boyfriend. Um, our uh, street crimes unit, MEG unit, they know that this person is a, uh, I guess, a uh, longtime uh, drug dealer. He has a number of convictions for that as well. Um, like I say, Ashley was indeed an ambulance, but she certainly did not want to talk to the police. Uh, she was uncooperative with the police. Both were uh, uh, suffering from an overdose on drugs. Um, they were both transported to the uh, emergency room. You know, she was uh, uncooperative. She did state that, uh, that they were um, using heroin and cocaine. They were mixing the two. Uh, the officers uh, saw in plain view in the apartment uh, syringes and other paraphernalia uh, that you would use for uh, um, intravenous drug use. And that is uh, how she obtained those, those three convictions related to drug activity. Less than one month later, uh, Ashley is actually out on bond. What happens is uh, she would have been incarcerated and um, she's released on bond. Part of her condition of her bond is that she's not to consume any alcohol or um, cr uh, create any other uh, criminal uh, offenses. What happened was uh, on April 18th, an officer stopped a vehicle with a loud exhaust. Ashley was operating the vehicle. Her license at the time was suspended. Um, she admitted that she was drinking intoxicants. The officer gave her a preliminary breath test. It did come back that she was drinking. Uh, she was uh, taken to the detention center on charge of bail jumping. Uh, when the officer got called back to the detention center, uh, when the jailer uh, committed, a, or I should say performed a strip search on Bauer, a um, small bag of cocaine fell from her underwear. And as a result, she was, um, like I say, it was referred over to this attorney's office for another charge of possession of cocaine. I could not see that that charge was ever issued. Um, another incident, uh, Ashley was not charged on this. But I, like I say, I reviewed the report. There's certainly evidence that she was culpable. Just uh, in November of 2007, uh, we had a local pharmacist uh, Call and they said that uh, we just took a, a person through our drive through and uh, they, they turned in a prescription for hydrocodone. The pharmacist 
indicated that the uh, doctor's signature on the prescription was inconsistent with previous pres uh, prescriptions that uh, he obtained from that doctor. That pharmacist called us uh, a short time later when the person <coughs> drive through to pick up the prescription. And as a result, a 33-year-old Sheboygan woman uh, was arrested for uh, prescription fraud and some other uh, narcotics-related charges. But she did uh, implicate uh, Bower's boyfriend, who was the same person that she earlier overdosed with, as uh, giving her uh, for his prescriptions in the past. She indicated that she uh, filled these prescriptions approximately four times. And this person also implicated Bower in uh, forging the prescriptions, the actual writing of them. Uh, and as a result, uh, we obtained a search warrant for Bower's apartment, which he shares with the 33-year-old boyfriend. Um, a small amount of marijuana was found in the apartment, suspected drug ledger, marijuana grinder, two small pots used to cook, suspected heroin. Uh, in the uh, garage, uh, inside a McDonald's bag, they found a digital scale, uh, small, uh, nine small bags which contained the marijuana. Uh, it's typically, it's uh, these nine bags indicated that they're for, that they're for uh, sale. <coughs> um, and this is kind of important. Uh, the, like I say, her boyfriend was charged with these, uh, with with this offense, but uh, when he had his probation revocation hearing, it was it was. Um, Bower that testified that the uh, marijuana was hers. And um, this was during the uh, revocation hearing concerning her boyfriend. Uh, inside the residence, uh, the officers found uh, two $1,000 piles of, of uh, currency, both rubber banded together. And um, the officers obviously were inquiring as to where this money came from. And this is kind of important here at um, Bower told the investigators that, uh, that she works part time for a painting and landscaping company. And her boyfriend works a lot of hours there, uh, full time plus. And that's uh, where the money would have would have uh, came from. Uh, the officers inquired as to what this company was. Uh, the name, uh, there is no such business. We later checked with our Ashley's and uh, her boyfriend's probation agent, and uh, they, she listed the same business with her probation agent. Uh, no such business, the phone, the phone number lists to somebody else. So like I say, even though Ashley was not charged with these offenses, <clears throat> there is sufficient evidence that, that she is certainly involved in knowledge of what was going on in that residence. Uh, like I say, we also, at that same time, information was received that uh, Bower's boyfriend had a storage uh, unit. Uh, we ran our Sheboygan K-9 past the um, storage unit. The K-9 did hit on one of the doors. Um, the officers found a large amount of illegal drugs inside the storage area. Uh, heroin, cocaine, marijuana, packaging material, cutting agents, uh, syringes, digital scales, and documents linking the owner of the storage facility to Ashley's boyfriend. Now, at, at the initial um, uh, hearing where Ashley talked in front of the Law and License, Law and License Committee, she, you know, she kind of indicated that uh, you know someone else was like setting her, you know, setting her and her boyfriend up for for these uh, charges. Uh, the, like I say, there was like motion hearings. Uh, um, like I say, there her boyfriend's trying to is trying to uh, indicate that uh, someone else put other like he had really no standing inside of this uh, storage facility. Well, since since then, a number of syringes which contained blood were sent to the uh, crime lab. Crime lab. Uh, the uh, DNA uh, did match. Um, uh, Bower's uh, boyfriend as the uh, the person who provided the blood in the in the syringes. So, I guess base you look at the the uh, totality of circumstances. I, I think the law and license committee made a good decision in not issuing this license. And I guess I would ask that you go along with their initial decision. 
Yeah. Um, yes, Mr. Mayor. Um, we've heard her uh, actually admit the uh, drug use, uh, overdose, and participation. I guess I'm looking for, and that was February, and then the bail jumping was March of last. Is that correct? Okay, the overdose was um, March 22nd, 07. Okay. So March, then April of last year, then was the bail jumping. Um, all the other information that you brought forward here, uh, what's the time schedule, time frame of that? Okay, she was out after uh, after the overdose, she was charged with mm -hmm. uh, uh, various drug charges. Uh, less than a month later, on April 18th, that was, w that was when the officer stopped her for loud exhaust. Right. Her license was suspended. She was arrested for bail jumping. I heard and the dates on those, but I didn't hear the dates on the, okay, the other. Okay, and like I say, the uh, search warrant, which all started from the mm -hmm. uh, forged drug prescription, that was uh, November 5th, 07. Okay. So it's, it's been as recent as seven months, eight months ago yet. Uh, um, follow-up question then is an investigation in that incident, is it shown that she is still with and uh, living with uh, this boyfriend that seems to be the... Uh, um, um, the, I guess, instigator, the one that's most common in all these issues. Do we know that yet? Uh, I asked her that question during the last law and license meeting. She said, yes, she was still living okay. with this person. Okay. Um, having been on that, com on that committee before, I tend to give benefit of the doubt for those that admit uh, and then challenge themselves to stay clear. My biggest concern in this incident is if she truly is still with this boyfriend, um, that I would uh, ask that you probably follow through the recommendation. Then if, if you're truly serious about walking away from drugs and turning your life around, it seems to me that that would be the first step as well. So I also urge you to follow the recommendation of the committee. Thank you, Alderman Rikesh. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. Evidently, the, the boyfriend is a, a bad dude. Is he still not incarcerated? And when did all these charges against him uh, happen? He's got a long history of uh, arrests for uh, drug-related charges. Okay, there was m many things that he did. I'm wondering when did these things happen, and is he and and he is still not incarcerated? He's still living on at his. The, at his I mean, home? The, the, um, he was on probation for some drug-related charges, and uh, like I say, he was arrested again in November of '07 after the search warrant. I'm not sure how that is proceeding in the court system. So that's not the best boyfriend in the world to have, but it's kind of guilty by association. Well, like I say, Ashley was convicted in, in March of 07. Uh, she overdosed, and there was um, drugs in her apartment, drugs in her system. Less than a month later, she had... Uh, uh, drugs that was located in the search uh, when she was taken to the detention center, and based on her, on the way she responded to uh, some of the questions the officer asked her, you know, regarding where this two thousand dollar come from, uh, she indicated she gave false information regarding where her boyfriend was was working there's no such business now the information about the detention center then were there were no charges with that detention center um, incident the officer referred the case over to the district attorney's office I could not find where she was charged I know she was charged with bail jumping but I could not find a pending possession of cocaine charge okay thank you okay there are no more questions thank you Senator Rosa. Thank you. Any further discussion? The issue now is 750. This is a report of committee uh, recommending that the uh, beverage operator's license number 7183 be denied. And that's based on the applicant's failure to reveal all convictions, status of a, as a repeat law violator, and record of violations related to the license activity. You have heard a, a pretty detailed uh, summary of, of what has been involved. You've also heard the uh, individual, the applicant, uh, state that uh, she's uh, attempting to make a comeback as, as a clean person. So that's what you, you've got the issue to deal with tonight. Uh, and I vote, will deny. <coughs> Please call the roll. Clayunas? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? No. Rinfleisch? Aye. 
Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? No. Verhassel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Bourne? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Decker? Aye. Excuse me? Aye. Thank you. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Aye. 13 ayes, 2 noes. Motion carries. License is denied. Report of committees 8, 751 by committee of the whole authorizing city of Sheboygan residency requirement for all newly hired, including full-time and part-time non-represented employees. Alman Bauk. Thank you, Your Honor. I uh, would move that the RCB be accepted and adopted and put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Motion and second under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Meyer? No. Montemayor? No. Rinfleisch? Aye. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. And uh, Kittleson? Aye. And Cleonis? Aye. 13 ayes, 2 noes. Motion carries. 752 by finance, recommend and authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2008 budget, establishing appropriation for, for additional sidewalk construction requested by property owners to be <coughs> special assessed. Alman Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I put that, I move that the uh, report of committee be accepted, adopted, and the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. <clears throat> Montemayor. Rinfleisch? Aye. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhassel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Cleunis? Aye. And Meyer? Aye. I'm sorry, 15 eyes. 15 eyes. <laughs> Motion carries. <laughs> 753, by finance, recommending amending the debt policy for the city's limit of on the annual debt issuance up to $5 million per year for non-TIF projects and passing the attached substitute resolution. <clears throat> Alderman Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted and the substitute resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second under discussion. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to make a friendly amendment to the resolution, if I might. Uh, I just want to restrict the utilization of the fund and say further resolved that the additional debt be earmarked uh, for infrastructure, street repairs and reconstruction and stormwater remediation. Just so down the road it doesn't find a new home. Right. Motion and second on the amendment to uh, earmark the additional borrowing for Street reconstruction, repair, and infrastructure. We have on the amendment only Alderman Verhassel. Sorry, my question's on the on the general amendments. one. Okay, on the amendment, Alderman Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, if I could ask Alderperson Hannah on the is the language uh, on the amendment from finance on page two that states, uh, and that was kind of the purpose. I'm agreeing with what you're what you're trying to do. That's what we try to do in finance. If, you have, if there's a better way of doing this, that's fine. Uh, the city general capital projects excluding stormwater re excluding stormwater remediation are not to exceed three million and the additional two million will be utilized for stormwater remediation and I think my consistent with that. okay wanna... do you want to are you adding a, a further be it further resolved or restating that i have I have no objection to the Just friendly so no and that was the intent of the uh, finance committee. We had great discussion regarding the fact that we don't want it to become 3.3 million, and then we only do 1.8. The Finance Committee was very clear on that. So very that's good. a very helpful amendment. Thank you. Thank you very much. On the amendment, Alderman Barr, Vice President Barr. Thank you, Your Honor. I just need a little further clarification for Alderman Hanna because the language here seems to be quite clear that not to exceed $3 million and an additional $2 million to be utilized for stormwater remediation. Uh, I, su I, su I support that totally, but I'm... I, I just want a clarification. Uh, does that mean that that $2 million, and pardon the pun, can be fertily, further diluted by other public works projects? Uh, I, it's my understanding that this $2 million is locked in only for stormwater remediation. That was my intention also. Okay, thank my you. My language was just to 
reaffirm that. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Alderman Rinfresh. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I guess a further question, the, the language that I had heard, which I was not able to write down fast enough, if I could be repeated um, for the resolved, re, uh, deals with the other $3 million. Um, $3 million at this point in time seems to be just general capital projects going through the capital improvements program. Uh, uh, it sounds like you uh, wish to restrict that to strictly street and city infrastructure. $2 million additional, then we're moving our debt limit up to $5 million. And I want the two million dollars to be further restricted. Okay, then I'm definitely in support of the uh, two million dollars to be restricted to capital improve, uh, infrastructure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you only amendment only, no further discussion. Please call the roll. Rinfleisch? Aye. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhassel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Clayunis, Meyer, I'm sorry, Aye. and Montemayor. Aye. Fifteen ayes. Motion carries. On addition, I need a motion to pass as amended. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the uh, resolution be accepted and adopted as amended. Motion and? Second. There a second? Second. Under discussion. There being none, please call. Oh, there it is. Alderman Hassel. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, can I just ask a question of the finance chair? or a member of the Finance Committee, there's reference to uh, the 3% of the equalized valuation of the city, I imagine. I, I assume that's the real estate valuation citywide. And if so, what year is that figure based on? Because it's obviously ascended quite a bit here over the last six or eight years, but now we're probably heading in the other direction, so I'm just curious about that. Okay. Om, uh, Om Gisha? Uh, th that question was discussed, and if other members of the committee have some more information or if I'm uh, recollecting that wrong, please chime in. Uh, uh, Finance Director and Treasurer Hansen reported based on the percent of valuation that the City of Sheboygan is allowed to use for debt service puts us somewhere around an available uh, debt capacity of about $58 million. We are roughly at $36 million. So uh, the, the capacity is there, and even if there is a downturn in real estate market, we certainly have sufficient cushion to, to chew that up. Um, and um, he, keep in mind that these funds will be paid back out of the general fund. We no longer have the stormwater fee. That's one of the reasons we're We have sufficient capacity from a debt service standpoint and sufficient cushion. And if any other member uh, uh, heard it any differently, please interject. On the wrestle. I have a question, and I, I mentioned this to Alderman Gisha prior to the meeting, but I'm not clear if there's a duration on this. There's a reference in the second to last line about included in the five-year capital improvements program. There's no explicit language um, stating when, when the sunset is on this, this borrowing capacity. There, you're correct. There is no sunset. Uh, the council can choose to either uh, state one or leave, leave it open-ended as it is and then change that date at a, at a later time. Uh, what I had proposed initially, uh, and obviously the Finance Committee decided not to address that issue, is, is to put together a five-year plan to borrow an additional $2 million a year, increase our borrowing from 3%, to $3 million to $5 million, and earmark that additional $2 million strictly for infrastructure uh, repair, street uh, resurface, and reconstruction to address some, uh, some of the flooding that, that we've had in the, in, in the past. That, uh, that I feel is extremely important, and all of you feel it's extremely important to address. Vice President Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. Just to uh, expand a little bit on, on some of the discussion at finance, this, this $2 million that we're having to borrow is a direct result of the stormwater fee going away. Uh, and uh, again, this $2 million is going to fall on the backs of all the residential property taxpayers when we had the stormwater fee yeah, in existence, and as much as I hate fees, I supported this one because all of the nonprofits, including the hospitals, were paying into the stormwater fee. The stormwater fee is going away. The, the stormwater uh, projects are not going to go away. And as we go forward, unless some, some type of a stormwater fee is reinstituted, this is going to continue to fall on the backs of the residential 
taxpayers. So I just want the taxpayers out there to know that this is a result of the, the uh, stormwater fee going away. And as much as we all hate fees, I thought it was very fair because everybody was paying into it, not just the residential taxpayers. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, I guess I have concerns, again, it, it was just talked about, but, you know, we've got home values falling. I see in the very last statement that we've actually, if I'm understanding it correctly, we're going to be increasing this at a rate of 3.6% every year. Is that, could that number be explained? Let me just, uh, uh, Mr. Hanson, would you like to come up here, please? Mr. Hanson's a... Uh, Department head, you can address some of those issues. But we're assuming home values are going up 3.6 percent. No, no. Yes, the the language on there is that it's anticipated that it's averaged 3.6 percent, but it does not state that it's earmarked at 3.6 percent. So there is no definite 3.6 percent increase. The potential exists for that much slack. There, there is potential for more or less. Yes. Okay, okay. Um, I guess, would it be proper to offer up a friendly amendment that we, uh, you know, from a responsible standpoint, that we put a five-year uh, definition on this resolution, that we this council, whoever it may be, revisit it in five years? If you would like to make that motion, you're, you're free to do it. It hasn't been made yet. I'd like to make that motion. I guess, I, yeah, I would like to make the motion that we, in the, if you read down in the, now, therefore, be it further resolved towards the end of the, be, I'm sorry, the beginning of the second sentence, the debt limit for the, it says currently the future years and the maximum amount of debt for TIF purposes, so to read the debt limit for the next five years and the maximum amount of debt for the TIF purposes will be included in the five-year capital improvements program. There's a motion and a second. I think it makes perfect sense as we're making sure we earmark that money and we earmark it for a specific time frame. Any discussion on the amendment only? I have a... Alderman Wagaman blinking. Do you want it on the amendment? No. No? Okay. <clears throat> Anybody else on the amendment? I'd like a clarification if I could. Alderman Verhasselt, are you talking uh, the debt limit for the and then replace future years for next five years? Is that all you're doing? Correct. Thank yes. you. The increase will be in effect for five years after five years at sunsets. Revisited. Mm -hmm. Do you want that stated in there or just leave it at the next five years? Next five years is fine. It's fine. Okay. Everybody understand the motion? Okay. On the motion, on the amendment, please call the roll. Vanderweel? Aye. For Hassel? Aye. Wonkman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clyunis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. And Surik? Aye. Fifteen ayes. Motion carries. Now I need a motion to... Pass is amended. Uh, I move that the uh, resolution be accepted and adopted as amended once again. It would be. Can There's we do the subs? Subs of res, please. I move that the substitute. That would be better. <laughs> Thank you. Be accepted and adopted as amended. Yeah. Is that right? Okay. <laughs> Further amended. <laughs> <laughs> and there was a second to that. Any discussion on the amendment? Uh, Alderman Wagaman, you had your blinking light. Anything on that, sir? I wanted to uh, speak to the original document. Which is, uh, okay, so that's the next one. We've already done the amendment, so we're on the final right now, as final. amended. Would you like to speak to it? <clears throat> yes, thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. I would have to echo uh, Alderman Boren's comments. I was on the council when we uh, decided to get rid of the stormwater fee, and it's always a good thing to be able to tell our constituents, you know, we got rid of a fee for you. But this one turned around and bit us like a lot of people. There were some of us knew it would. And uh, it was a case of where we kind of threw the baby out with the bathwater. Tom Holton was director of public works at the time. He was very much against that idea because he couldn't see where we were going to get the water for street repairs. Or I mean, where we were going to get the money for street repairs. And of course, we know where we're going to get it, where we always get it. We get it out of the taxpayers' pockets. So it was a really a foolish, short-sighted thing that the uh, council perpetrated on the taxpayers of the city, and now here we are asking uh, for this document to go through, and it is necessary, of course. But as Alderman Boren said, it was the people who contributed the most to the problem paid the most. 
such as large business areas that had large parking lots and large roofs and things. They paid a good deal more. The average uh, householder paid a very small part of that. So it was a very equitable, I thought, and fair way to do it rather than uh, ask everybody uh, uh, to contribute the way we are now. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Gisha on that. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, this council has done and the council has done a historic job in reducing with, with the administration the amount of debt the city has. Millions upon millions upon millions of dollars have been refinanced or paid off and uh, I always get a little nervous with a handshake when you look at increasing debt after the, as I said, historic work that I think this and the last council has done. Um, but how else do you do it? We have citizens who who are underwater, literally, and, and, and flooding around, it does need to be paid for in some way. Um, I would remind everyone, uh, fellow older people, that right now this debt is being paid for by the general fund, which reduces all the rest of the money for the budget. If somebody has an alternative method on how to pay for this, with increased or bringing back, doing whatever, they're welcome to do so. My name on a document that increases debt is not comfortable to me, but when you have citizens who are, who are living in, in mud and filth with no hope of, of the next time we have one of these rains of it not happening again, we have to address that. I mean, that's not only a public health concern, but it's our obligation. But there are plenty of opportunities for, for people to come with different ways of, of paying for just that $2 million portion of it, for instance. So. We have a wonderful creative minds in this room, um, and, if, and if those options are there, we all have the ability to bring these things forth, and I would look forward to those, uh, those thoughts by fellow older people. Thank you, Alderman uh, There is no further discussion on the motion to uh, pass as amended. Please call the roll. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhassel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. And Rinfleisch? No. 14 ayes, 1 no. Motion carries. Ordinances introduced 10, 754 through 56 to be referred. Matters laid over 11. 631 RO number 790809 by the City Plan Commission recommending amending the zoning of property located at 03 South 13th Street from Class Urban Industrial to Class Urban Commercial. Is that 13th or 14th Street? 13th? 14th. It says 13th there. Oh, it's 14th. It's 14th. Yeah, okay. we moved it. Okay. Yeah, the document says. I know, but I read 13th, yep. and it should be 14th. I'm, I was reading off the document, uh, agenda here. Make that notation at uh, South uh, 14th Street. That's the one we just had the hearing on. Um, Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move to accept and file the RO, and the ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. For Hasselt. Aye. Wankaman. Aye. Boren. Aye. Bauk. Aye. Decker. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Kittleson. Clayunis. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Surik. Aye. And Vanderweel. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 652, resolution number 5408809 by Alderman Clayunas, amending the composition of the Sustainable Sheboygan Task Force so as to add four members. Alderman Clayunas. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Alderman Gisha. Thank you. Uh, if Alderperson Klyutis uh, could address the residency portion of those members uh, as to whether they will necessary for them to be city residents or not. Alderman Klyutis. Well, uh, do we have another... Uh, Resolution 672, which is also talking about residency. Uh, specifically, those who are supposed to be city residents would be city residents named in, in, on the Composition Task Force. But because um, 
maybe some of the uh, experience or uh, background may not be from a city resident. We're also having county people on the board, on the task force, uh, specifically naming county people. Um, I, I feel as if it's a good thing that uh, we have a, a larger pool to pull from. Um, there will be lots of city uh, res uh, representation on it. Um, it's kind of a shared service type mm -hmm. uh, action. It's not that we're, um, it's a shared thinking, I guess, thinking task force so that the county can work with us because we're not encapsulated in city boundaries. The issues we'll be talking about affect a larger area than just the city limits. And I might add that if, if anything, and I, I tend to, uh, to agree with residency requirements, but if there's anything, any committee that has ever come before us, and I was an alderman several years before being mayor, this is probably the one that makes the most sense to have people that are not residents. Uh, we've asked, for example, the, uh, the chamber to include, uh, to refer a, a name. They could pick one from anywhere in the county because it's a Sheboygan County Chamber of Commerce. We've asked UW Sheboygan. It could be anybody because everybody outside the county comes to UW Sheboygan. So the, 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 the point that Alderman Clay, Clay Unis has made is it's more of a shared thinking uh, approach is great, and if any committee uh, should have a diverse membership of outside the city limits, this is probably the best one. Alderman Gisha. I, I'm sorry, I'm going to refer, uh, I will withdraw my, and then uh, ask the questions more where it's more appropriate, frankly, at 672. Um, I have no problem with the increase of adding four members, but I do have some additional questions on very good. the uh, very good. Thank you very much. Okay, we've got 652. Uh, motion has been put the resolution upon its passage to increase uh, the committee, uh, the, co the composition, f as, as to add four members. Um, please call the roll. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rindfleisch? Aye. Zurich? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. And Verhasselt? 15 ayes. Motion carries. 653, resolution number 550809 by Alderman Gisha, Clayunas, Boren, Bauk, and Montemayor, authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2008 budget, establishing appropriation for, for purchase of information technology equipment. Alderman Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the uh, resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayton? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rindfleisch? Aye. Zurich? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. And Wangaman? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 654, resolution number 560809 by Alderman Gisha, Clayunas, Boren, Bauk, and Montemayor. Authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2008 budget, establishing revenue and appropriation for monies received for drug enforcement activities from the federal government and Sheboygan County Courts, donations to the Junior Police Academy, donation for pol community policing, and funds for fire department training. Alderman Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Bauk? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rindfleisch? Aye. Zurich? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. And Boren? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 655, resolution number 570809 by Alderman Gisha, Clayunis, Boren, Bauk, and Montemayor. Authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2008 budget, establishing appropriation for purchase of police department emergency response team vehicle. One more time, Alderman Gisha. Long night. Uh, I move that the resolution be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Alderman Rainfleisch. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, just a point of order, actually. For resolution, should, resolution should be put upon their passage, not accepted and adopted. We've got a couple of them in a row now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I just have some concerns with the way this resolution has been brought in. I don't feel that it has followed the process. 
I'm not understanding why it did not go to the Motor Vehicle Fund Committee for their review since this directly affects the Motor Vehicle Fund and seeing that the process was not followed, I won't be able to support this. Thank you, Alderman Meyer. Alderman Gisha. Thank you. Um, doesn't affect the Motor Vehicle Fund at all. Uh, it's $85,000 being borrowed from the Motor Vehicle Fund. We've never taken a nickel out of the Motor Vehicle Fund that wasn't paid back with interest and scheduled to be paid back with interest. Um, and secondly, it's a motor vehicle. So I, I, I don't know what the issue would be, except that uh, that's the mechanism for financing it, and the money's being paid back. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, that's a wonderful concept, but seeing that this department did not have the money in their budget to begin with to um, finance this uh, vehicle, I don't think they're going to have it in the future to pay it back. Just an observation. Thank you. It is a... Um the motor vehicle fund is is, uh, is being the money is being put in place for the motor vehicle fund through the uh, public works department only. The police department has never has never contributed any and never wanted to, so it's not part of the formula. It is a motor vehicle. I agree with you. Uh, I think while Alderman Myers is saying it is if if it affects and it does. Anytime you take a penny out, whether you're going to pay it or not, affects. Uh, she's just asking or concern that that should have been gone through the, the committee too. Alderman for Hassel. Thank you, Your Honor. I guess uh, just a question on this transfer here. Why not simply a withdrawal from the fund? I mean, the fund is between eight and nine, eight headed towards $9 million. Um, in my opinion, a bloated fund in excess of the needs of the fund itself. Um, and then on top of it, we're paying interest, and that interest is being paid with taxpayer dollars. So it just conceptually, I'm having some issues with it on a whole lot of levels. So I'm just curious the direction why we chose not to just make it a simple withdrawal. It's a one-time expense, which I think is is kind of the spirit of any withdrawal from there, rather than a recurring expense. Mm -hmm. It's uh, internal cash management, pretty much. Uh, you you you're borrowing from a, a department a, a department who has not appropriated any money to an account is borrowing from there. And it's logical in terms of internal cash management practice to have that particular department paid back, which is what Alderman Gisha has said. The only issue I think that Alderman Meyer brought up, and I think it's a very critical one, is when there's a committee that's assigned to deal with issues specific to that matter, it should go before that committee as a courtesy and as a recommendation only. Yes, please. And I, and I do understand the mechanics of it. I, I really do. But conceptually... Uh, it could be argued that that fund needs to stand more for three, four, five million dollars, and we're sitting at eight, um, gaining interest, moving towards nine million dollars, and we're paying back interest to this already. And again, my opinion, a bloated fund. So it's just a difference in opinions. Thank you, Mr. Well, one Thank more you. time. <laughs> um, I don't disagree necessarily with all the person for hassle. Matter of fact, I had a very spirited conversation about that very thing with then acting uh, finance director uh, and treasurer Nancy Buss. And uh, this was the recommendation based on the, dis uh, on the uh, actually the definition that the mayor gave was the definition that Nancy had given as well. Um, I think some of our issue comes in with the fact that I think people think, look at the motor vehicle fund as owned by who contributes to it. And not only conceptually, but statutorily, that's just completely inaccurate. Uh, the Motor Vehicle Fund is owned by the citizens of Sheboygan, not by any one department for any one particular use. It is, it is a savings account that the city of Sheboygan, through the taxpayers, purchased a whole bunch of iron in the form of equipment. We rent that equipment, much like Quashus does, to individuals. The uh, Public Works Department is the largest user of that equipment. Not the only, but certainly the super majority. Wouldn't matter to me if there were 50 different departments utilizing that motor vehicle fund. The return of those funds are the property of the citizens of Sheboygan. And if we can utilize those funds so that we can save money by paying off debt, restructuring things, and things like that, we are benefiting those who gave those funds to begin with. So conceptually, I understand turf with this. Um, but those funds are not owned by any department and are not the property of anyone but the citizens of the city of Sheboygan. And, and I would agree with you, but that includes the entire general operating budget. And, and even though that, all that general operating budget belongs to the citizens, 
we still have committees that certain requests and appropriations need to go through in order to be approved. That's our structure, and I agree with Alderman Meyer that perhaps, even though it was an oversight, it should have gone through the uh, through the committee itself. Uh, and again, the Public Works Department appropriates that money for future uh, purchases of, of vehicles. They don't need to do that because every time they do that, they shift money from somewhere else. If the, if the Department of Public Works doesn't elect to do that they're at all, they're going to be using it, hiring people or, or using it for other things. Alderman Rainflash. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I guess the question is, I haven't yet to hear anybody saying that the time is of the essence. We had, did not suspend it last time around. We simply laid it over. Uh, so if time is not of the essence, there should be no reason why we cannot refer it to the Motor Vehicle Fund Committee. And I'll make that motion. Motion and second to refer to the Motor Vehicle Committee for consideration. Under discussion on the motion to refer. Please. Alderman Bauk. Thank you, Your Honor. Just a quick question. Is there any urgency with this? Does anyone know? As I understand, the vehicle isn't, we have no emergency response vehicle now. We were replacing one. It's not working anymore, as I understood it. Is that anybody from the police department? No, okay, so, so right now we don't have an emergency response vehicle, so I will not be supporting the amendment. Mm -hmm. Thank you. The motion is to refer back. Please call the roll. Refer to? Uh, Motor Vehicle Committee. Motor Vehicle Review. Motor Vehicle Review Committee. Gisha? No. Hannah? No. Heideman? No. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? No. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Rinfleisch? Aye. Zurich? No. Vanderweel? No. Verhassel? Aye. Wangaman? No. Boren? No. Bauk? No. Decker? No. Five eyes, ten noes. Motion fails. We're back on the motion to approve the appropriations. Please call the roll. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Meyer? No. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhassel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. And Balk? Aye. 14 ayes, 1 no. Motion carries. 671, General Ordinance Number 300809 by Alderman Kittleson, amended the Municipal Code so as to change the composition of the Joint Municipal Advisory Committee. Alderman Kittleson. Thank you, Your Honor. I would make a motion to put the uh, ordinance upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Under discussion, the, um, we just increased that the committee was three, and now we have five members appointed by the mayor, um, and then it was... Um, one of three, now it's two of five members, shall be representatives of the village nominated by the village board. It's a house cleaning type house of thing. House cleaning item, yes. Any other uh, discussion? <clears throat> there being none, please call the roll. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Fifteen eyes. Motion carries. Six seventy two. General ordinance number thirty one oh eight oh nine by Alderman Clayunas, creating a subsection in the nineteen seventy five Sheboygan Municipal Code exempting certain members of the sustainable task force from the residency requirement. Alderman Clayunas. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second under discussion. Alderman Gisha. Sorry, I should have waited on this That's the fine. previous time. Uh, but I, I agree with Alderperson uh, Clayunas' earlier comments about having more of a broader approach. I think that's excellent, but this isn't a county city committee. This is just a city committee. We spent a lot of time in this room talking about residency, and I believe Alderperson Kittleson was an author of that, uh, a co-author of that, yet it doesn't apply to this. I, I, it just seems confusing to me to have a person from the county making a recommendation uh, who isn't a tax-paying citizen. If, if, if somebody wants to make this a county-wide committee, that would be fine, but it is not. It's a city committee. It just seems a bit odd after all the time we've spent on residency. 
And, and there is a uh, uh, precedent, uh, one in particular that we dealt with when I was an alderman is a, um, a member of the uh, Water Utility Board of uh, Commissioners. Uh, the resident requirement stood that you had to be a resident. The council at that time wanted to change the resident requirements. I actually made a motion to amend to allow just one not to be a resident. Otherwise, you could have all five. In this case, it's pretty specific here. A question As, on that, Mayor? Yes. Um, was, was that not done, if you could clarify that for me, for one specific person who's named not to say we're always going to have one person who's not from the city? I believe that was done for Jerry Vandercreek, one individual who spent the last 20 years on the Water Commission. But I don't believe it was done as a broad stroke of we'll always have one person who it's okay to have one person not from the city on the Water Commission. I believe that was one exception made for an individual. My recollection is one exception was made for that person. Right. But it, was, it stood if he were to leave. At least one person could be, could be allowed to be a, a non-resident. Okay, you. but that was that was the uh, the, uh, the the starting point. Okay, we have Alderman McLeanus. I think uh, Attorney McLean maybe I yes. Attorney McLean. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I just want to point out. You see that the the numbering on this is B and sub seven. Uh, what that references is the general proposition in A is you've got to be a city resident if you're on a board or commission. Uh, B, 1 through 6 are six exceptions. This would be the seventh exception. So as the mayor mentions, uh, uh, the water utility member was exempted. Uh, there's a member of the mayor's international committee who, as long as they reside within the Sheboygan Area School District, Members of the Marine and Harbor Committee, as long as uh, uh, they have either a boat at the marina or they're uh, representing the county and because the county has money involved. Uh, we've got uh, members of the contractor's boards because we had problems with uh, uh, licensed contractors serving on those boards. Uh, that was limited to if they had a business within the city. So there's a number of exceptions, and this you know, uh, is would be another one to the general rule of residency. Thank you. Alma Clay, does you wish to speak anymore? Please Thank you, Your Honor. I just would add that any um, recommendations that would come from this task force would be coming to the council. So you still, it's not going to be like it's something, you know, slipped under the rug or something like that. It would be brought back to the council for approval. And uh, hopefully they would always be making recommendations that would improve the city of Sheboygan. And uh, the county would, I would think, catch on and be part of it in some way in doing their own um, expansion of it in their own uh, forums, I hope. Thank you. And finally, Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Alderman Gisha, I can understand what, what you mean, but I would think that on this sustainable Sheboygan task force, we should get as many people as we can from our area that have expertise and knowledge to help us with this particular problem. And if there's somebody outside the city limits that has a key and bit of information or expertise, I think we need to use that person. Okay. Everybody okay then? The motion is to uh, put the resolution upon its passage. Please call the roll. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Zurich? Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. for Hassel, Aye. Wangaman, Aye. Boren, Aye. Bauk, Aye. Decker, Aye. Gisha, Aye. and Hannah. Aye. Fifteen ayes. Motion carries. 673, General Ordinance Number 320809 by Alderman Hannah, Rinfleisch, Ryan, Heidemann, and Kittleson, relating to no parking zones so as to add a no parking in the alley zone in the east-west alley south of Michigan Avenue west of North 17th Street. President Hannah. Thank you, Mr. I move the ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. <laughs> Under discussion. <laughs> Alderman Verhassel. Thank you, Your Honor. I just wanted to verify that the, uh, all the affected homeowners have been approached or given a notice of this change. Uh, but President Hannah? Yes, um, absolutely. Yeah, they were all pooled and uh, they were all uh, surveyed and it came back very positive. Okay. Very good, and that is the general practice when we have this. Okay, there being no more discussion, please call the roll. Kittleson? Aye. Clionis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. 
Zurich? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhassel? Aye. Wonkerman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. And Heidemann? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Other matters authorized by law. Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, 757 is communication from David Gowani <coughs> requesting that many storm sewers be installed in his area as he ex has experienced numerous flooding in his basement. That will be referred to Public Works. 758 is a communication from Mark Gurney stating that he has had replaced by Griesmeyer Concrete. They're already rising with tree roots and feels they should be replaced by Griesmeyer Concrete without charging the city or himself. That will be referred to Public Works. 757 is an RO by the Board of Electrical Examiners uh, submitting or uh, advising that the following licenses have been issued. 759 lies over. 760 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting a communication from Tammy Hitman, 2008 Brat Day's Parade Chairperson, stating that the Brat Day Board has passed a motion to have any participating political figure pay a $50 fee for participating in the parade. However, if the mayor council are able to provide 10 volunteers for the event, the $50 fee would be refunded. It's at, uh, it's at $5 a, a minute, <laughs> an hour, I should say. That will be referred to finance. I'll make sure get that one. 761 is an RO by the city clerk submitting communication from Mark Mann, president of the Liars Dice Club, requesting permission to close Swift Avenue for the annual fundraising street dance beginning at 7 a.m. rather than 10 a.m. on August 3rd. That will be referred to public protection and safety. 762 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a claim from Gary Scherenbrock for alleged damages to their basement when the sewers backed up because they were plugged up with tree roots and debris. That will be referred to risk management. 763 is a resolution authorizing the city attorney to engage the services of special outside legal counsel to represent the law and licensing committee and counsel. Uh, with regard to quasi-judicial hearings regarding suspension revocation of Class B alcohol beverage license number 2521 and Class A alcohol beverage license number uh, for shenanigans uh, and authorizing payment for said services. 763 will lie over. 764 is a committee report by the City County Shared Services Committee. <coughs> A committee to whom was referred RO 6030708 by the city clerk submitting communication from Glenn Marcus regarding the matter of joint dispatch and stating that they established an ad hoc committee. Uh, recommends that the document be accepted and placed on file. Lies over. 765 is an ordinance amending section 29-75 of the 1975 municipal code so to include the following change to pay schedule X, class B4. 765 will also lie over. 766 is an ordinance amending section 2975 of the 1975 municipal code so as to include the following change to pay schedule Y, class grade 23. That too lies over. 767 is a committee report by City County Shared Services advising your committee to whom was referred res number 410809 by all the persons for Hasselt and Boren, authorizing the city of Sheboygan to initiate a shared services study with the Sheboygan County government for the purposes of determining the most cost-effective, efficient location for a joint emergency dispatch, recommends that the resolution be placed on file. And that one also will lie over. 768 is communication from Anthony and Susan Puxich of Fox Ridge Court regarding the noise level of the music being played at Crossroads uh, 4604 South Business Drive. That will be referred to Law and Licensing Committee. 769 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2009 and June 30, 2010. That will also go to Law and Licensing Committee. President Hanna, any motion to go into closed session? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would make a motion that we go into closed session. Would you like? Second. Motion and second to go to closed session. Do you want me to read the statute? Yes, please do. Okay. Under the exemption provided by Section 19.851G, Wisconsin Statutes, for the purpose of conferring with legal counsel for the city who is rendering oral or written advice concerning a strategy to be adopted by the city with respect to litigation in which it is involved. Thank you. Please uh, call the roll. Clayunas? Meyer? Aye. 
Montemayor. Aye. Rin Fleisch. Aye. Zurich. Aye. Vanderweel. Verhassel. Aye. Wangeman. Aye. Boren. Aye. Bauk. Aye. Decker. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. And Kittleson. 15 ayes. Motion carries. We'll go into closed session for the benefit of the public. When we reconvene, uh, we will not be on, on TV anymore. This will be a closed session. I'd ask everyone to leave except uh, our, our council and uh, HR director. Thank you very much.